Say hi, Jacob. That's Jacob. So, I'm uh, I'm here with Jacob working on this F350. Is a 2005. And what was the problem with it there, Jake? Runs like I shouldn't swear. <laughs> <laughs> Runs like not not so good. Runs, Runs like not a dog. so good. Like a dog yeah. with two legs. Runs like. Actually, I've seen some dogs with two legs that can run pretty good. So, um, what was it that you told me that how they like to drive it? That shit crazy. I mean, yeah, but yeah. why? Why was it they like to drive it? it? Makes cool turbo noises. You heard it right from the man himself. Makes cool turbo noises. So, uh, got a couple of injector codes, and Jacob is pulling apart some of the. He's just making some access for me to get in there. Um, come out to look at this. This thing is uh, got 450,000 kilometers on it, and it looks like they've been some hard K. Um, it's got some aftermarket accessories that have been installed. The uh, intercooler, the air-to-air -air hose. Um, you got a nice little restriction down there, but boy, does that look cool. Uh, it has a tune, has some aftermarket parts. The uh, glow plug module has been replaced there. Uh, fuel pressure sensor. Is that what that one was there, Jacob? Um it's uh, injector pressure sensor. An injector pressure sensor has been replaced. Injector control pressure sensor. Uh, we've got an aftermarket down in there. I don't know if you can see it. The uh, fuel control module or fuel injector control module. So I'll take you over and we'll look at the scan tool. Uh, I did a relative compression test on her to make sure that we had compression in each cylinder. So here we go as we start cranking it. I'll bring my ruler down here. Ah, it's my first day. So you can see that I cranked this over for about 10 seconds and that all looks pretty, pretty decent there, pretty uniform. Uh, after cranking for a while, there is a couple that were a little bit high, but I don't see anything there. It's a huge, huge concern for me. Uh, so let's go have a look at what our codes are. And Jacob's just getting some access to the injectors for me. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's injectors at this point. Let's not talk about that compressor wheel play either. Talk about what? So let's not talk about that compressor wheel play either. <laughs> details. <laughs> details, uh, details. So, yeah, it's a typical construction truck. Uh, I have my scan tool here. So what are we looking at? We did a relative compression test on the tool. I uh, had to use this so I could disable the fuel system. And same thing here, we showed just a 5% difference on cylinder one, 2% on cylinder eight, uh, and it's cylinders two, six, and eight that aren't doing a whole lot for us. So I go back into my, let's get out of the actual scanner. So here are my codes. Um, the ones I'm concerned with here is the powertrain control module, uh, cylinder six, injector circuit high, cylinder six, contribution, contribution balance, cylinder eight, yep. injector high. So we pulled the intake hose off and get the coolant hose out of the way there. So you can see there's definitely some oil inside the turbo. Um, very small amount of play up and down some more in and out so that's not great um, we do so air intake from our turbo charged air goes through the intercooler comes back out up here and then right in here is right to our engine and i mean there's definitely oil in there but it's not the worst i've ever seen so I'll let them know that the turbo is probably going to need to be replaced soon, but uh, what I want to do now is get in on my injectors. Coolant hose is in the way again. So, and now my arm's in the way. <laughs> this is my first day. So that right down there. And yeah, I can't even see the other ones. Oh boy. And the connector, of course, for the fuel control module is underneath the module itself. So this, uh, this should be fun. All right, where did I leave off on this old beauty? So uh, we've been working on this a little bit and we are getting different codes in the PCM. 
as, uh, as we do some different tests and stuff on it. So our cylinder six, Injection contribution, injection circuit high was there. The contribution balance is new. Misfire and cylinder three detected. Uh, that's new, but I think that's us because I was doing some power testing on the uh, left bank of the engine. We had to get the uh, air cleaner pulled off to do that. The crank position sensor circuit. Um, man, that's that's also not not good. You know, I'm curious if that crank position sensor circuit could be just the cause of everything. Because without that, it doesn't have timing on it. It doesn't know when to fire anything. Yeah, but when we were looking at the live data, it said the cam and the crank were it in sync. It said it was in sync, yeah. And then our injector control pressure circuit range came back again. And realistically, like if that cam or if that crank sensor is bad, we would it, have engine RPM. Yeah, no, right? you're right. But it's still that circuit that that code does not make me very my, comfortable. My next question is: Does that for that uh, crank position sensor for some reason run through that uh, fuel module? We have to look that up in the wiring diagram. Um, so if we go into our into the PCM here, you show them the you show them the balance test too. That's what we're gonna do that right now. Maybe I should turn this little guy off. I can see my red light in the. On the scanner. Boop, there you go. Ah, it's turned fine. Turned off. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're good. Don't worry about it. Okay, so uh, in here we already read our fault codes. When we go into our data stream, we got a bunch of different information. What I found really interesting here, uh, was it under special functions? Yes. We look at our power balance test. <laughs> Yeah, there's a pulley on this thing that's starting to die. So our power balance test here, look at this. On cylinder number two, we got almost nothing. Cylinder four is very weak. So on cylinder two, I only have power on, you're supposed to have two powers, two grounds. Open the injector and close the injector. And I only have the close power on it. Cylinder four, I didn't have power for either. Read nothing on my scope, so I'm not sure how it's even measuring up here. And then six and eight, we couldn't get at to measure our powers and grounds because they were buried underneath everything. So the kind of, I mean, this tells us a lot, but to confirm, oh, that's neat, it cleared it. To kind of confirm all of this info, let's see what else do I have here. Relative compression, I think I already showed you. If we go back to, was it actuation test? Yeah, our injector disables. So let's go into injector one, which is supposed to be running okay. Uh, I wanna look at some data on the injector disable. I mean, the biggest piece of data is just listening and you can hear it as the engine changes its RPM. But since I got that crank code, I'm gonna pull that live data up on the, is it synced? Uh, number of misfires, we weren't reading anything on the misfires. However, we want the desired idle. Uh, however, it was giving us a code, or not a code, but just the info said misfire monitor not run. Hey, one of the uh, injectors just kicked in. look at the computer and just make sure both of them are still firing. Okay. Pick some of my injector control data. Where the heck was my engine actual RPM? This thing's sounding worse and worse. <laughs> If you press the brake pedal, it should stop. It will kind of... Oh, well, maybe not. Sometimes it's like to try and kick itself up on high idle and then... Well, that's interesting. Yeah. I missed it. Engine... Oh, there it is. There's my RPMers. Okay, so I got 10. So I got my injector 1 disabled. I can see my actual RPM, my desired. Hey, my injector control pressure is actually matching right now. Earlier today, it wasn't. Yeah, misfire monitor evaluated, no. Cam crank sync, yes. One misfire, that's it. Uh, it has more than one. Okay, let's disable injector one. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's, that's not good. 
So you could hear that. I hope the camera's picking that up. But you could also see it drop. So let's go Here, inject your camera and do that again. I'll get close to the Oh, engine. that's a good idea. Now you can hear that difference. I said, now you can hear that difference. It sounds like a big old dirty cam, right? Okay, so injector two, add the data. Uh, I've already got them selected, so okay. Injector two, disable. And it does nothing. Our RPM stays the same. You can hear the sound is the same. Uh, find it interesting that earlier our injector control, the desired and the actual were very off. Our actual was like 2,000 kilopascals higher. So cylinder two doesn't do anything. Uh, we ran through this. Cylinder six and eight were doing absolutely nothing. Cylinder four was working when we first started the day a few hours ago. And it's kind of contributing now, but not nearly as much as what it should be, which makes sense because in the power balance test there, it was weak. Yeah, it was not doing a whole lot. So let's go have a look see at the power on the injectors. So when we look at the scope data, we can see here that uh, this is on, what injector am I on there? I'm on number one, three, I'm on injector five and I got a power and a ground opening and closing it. So that's pretty cool. I did not have that on injectors two, four. I didn't try six and eight. Let's grab my uh, trusty old test light here. This thing's running worse and worse all the time. So I hooked the light up. On my ground, where am I? On my ground. Always test your light. Be careful of the belt. Do I have power? Yes. And yes. Oh, my test light broke. That's really sad. This thing's older than I am. Ugh, Jacob ran away. Ah, that's, that's disappointing. Uh, where did all my parts go? I lost the light bulb. Is it gone forever? Oh, there it is. Right there. Huh. Okay. Good thing I carry an extra. That's okay. Snap-on's got a lifetime warranty, right? Yeah, that's just old. A little bit of super glue will fix that. Um, so, you saw that on that cylinder one, three, five. We had the power there and cylinder five worked on our contribution test, a power balance test. To get to my other cylinders, I had to, so you can kind of see way back in there is uh, six and eight. I uh, had to remove my air intake to get to two and four and we did not have power there. So no power being delivered to the module, or sorry, to the injectors. No power being delivered to the injectors. That tells me that our module here has got a problem. So it needs to have all of its powers and grounds checked to make sure that it's uh, feeding everything. But I'm uh, fairly confident that I get a visual on that for you. I'm pretty confident that module is cooked. So if you look in there, you see how 
red that is. Yeah, the old coolant reservoir was leaking. And I think she was leaking for quite a while down onto that module. So we got to get that pulled out, inspect all the connectors on that. But water or coolant and modules, electronics, don't go together so well. So I think I am done for the day. I'm gonna let the customer know. We have, uh, there you are. We got a couple of issues with this. Um, it's an older used truck. I mean, what, what can you do, right? Like I, I don't know what they spent on it. How long have they had this? Man. Um, so we start with a module. We'll inspect the connectors on it or have it get the connector inspected. Um, make sure that, you know, test the wire integrity there, but it's, it's gonna need a module and then we're gonna have to just go from there. So I uh, hope this diagnosis helps you a little bit and see which way you gotta go on things. And I will give you an update on this once they uh, let me know what they're gonna do. Nice. That's your culprit. Let me give her a smell, hold on. <laughs> yep, smells like burnt electronics if I say so. Oh. Yeah, that happens, but it's whatever. <laughs> hold on. Runs like a fucking beauty.